Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop as we turn, do the episode on turning the queen. Um, the queen is usually the second tallest of, of the pieces and, and generally has an elegant form and I think the design challenge is giving, it a, giving the queen a feminine form and yet a, a form of, a, of a authority. The queen has a coronet which is defined as a small, small crown uh, smaller than that, generally worn by the, the sovereign, and generally it's capped by a ball. The original design for this set did not include the ball, and I added it back in, as you can see in this, in this close-up of, of the piece. So here is a picture of the original uh, queen, uh, not to scale, uh, and it doesn't show the ball on top. And then the one in the middle is my... Uh, storyboard card with the measurements marked on it where I've added the ball ball feature and then to the right uh, clearly is w one of the uh, queens that I'll be turning today. Many designs for the queen have eight crenellations as shown in this picture uh, from Wikipedia by uh, Bubba73. These are typically added uh, by using uh, using a rasp such as this. I picked this up for about 50 cents at a, at a garage sale. Uh, if you want to add, I, I chose to omit the, the crenellations based on the original design. If you want to add them, you could probably even use a uh, chainsaw uh, file for those, those crenellations. This is a pretty straightforward piece to turn. I think the only real challenge is turning that little ball at the top. And if you screw it up, hey, all you gotta do is uh, cut it off, drill a little hole, turn a separate ball out of a contrasting piece. Okay, we're going to get started turning this thing, and then later on toward the end of the video, I'll show you how I dyed the pieces uh, black. I hope you're enjoying this, this series, and if you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, that way you'll be notified when I come up with a new video, and it'll make it easier to, to find them. Enjoy. Okay, let's turn to Queen. Uh, before we do, let me just mention uh, duplicating pieces because I think that can be uh, tricky and a little intimidating. The key to me is using a story, uh, a story card, storyboard with the key dimensions. And you use that to make sure that the pieces you turn have the features at the same height. That's the critical thing. The next being at the same place, this sharp corner being at the same place, and of course the, the pieces being the same, same height. Now, what you need to avoid are simple, avoid simple mistakes, like the one, one feet design feature I have on here is this part. And they start, you can see they start at the same place, but unfortunately, I grabbed the wrong parting tool for this one. And it's thicker. And I didn't want it that, that, that dominant, I wanted to use a small parting tool, so uh, that was one problem. The other problem is I got a little bit sloppy on the base. This was actually a prototype. Uh, and it's a little bit larger than this, uh, so you need to size those diameters the, uh, appropriately as well. But it's not that difficult, just a little bit of attention to detail. Let's get started. So first we're going to turn it round. i got tailstock support. On longer pieces I think that's important. Alright, let's check our dimensions. The first dimension is the base, and it's uh, uh, 30 millimeter, and that's the same size as this, so I can tell this is too large. Uh, even without having to uh, uh, measure it. Uh, the other key dimension is the neck, so I want to spot that, and let's turn that on to spot those dimensions. And then that sharp edge, and that'll be the top of the ball. We'll come back and double double check those. And then the bottom of that design feature. Go ahead and put that little design feature. Go down a sixteenth of an inch. Come over here. Take this one down a little bit. Down. Give me something to shoot it, to shoot for and mark this at the top of the ball. Okay, now the next 
next dimension is going to be the thickness of this, which is 20 millimeter. I'll go ahead and take that down now and, and measure that. So I set my calipers to 20 millimeter. Eyeball that, see how far I got to go. And I've got a little ways to go. Again, taking my beating and parting tool. Since this is going to be the uh, That's the shoulder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this down a little bit. Now let's take this down. I left just enough detail there in the middle that I can tell where that shoulder is going to be. No, he's having to come back and measure that. Again, put a V groove so I have something to shoot for. Now let's turn the lathe off and just spot check. And right on the money. Don't want to take that down anymore. So now let's go ahead and waste away some of the wood here. I'm being a little aggressive. I need to slow down now and take some other cuts to prevent any chance of tear out. Position. Let me go again to the top. The crown. I'm go ahead and take this down a little bit where the, the ball is going to be. Just a little bit. Now, as a result of that, I can take this sharp edge here and go ahead and start shaping that down to where the ball is going to be. And then I'll start down on this side. Now the next critical dimension is this diameter, which is 11 millimeter. So let's go ahead and take that down. And I'm just checking this to, for an eyeball idea how big it is. This is just a little bit bigger than, uh, than 11, so I can kind of eyeball that. I don't want to take it down too far. So I don't want to use a... I can use a parting tool for a little bit, but I gotta be careful with that or I'll change the shape.
see that slice with it. I think I've probably got uh, pretty close to seven millimeter and it's right on the money uh, so the only thing I got left is just maybe uh, just kind of spruce this up just a little bit with a with a skew I'll come in here with this little small round skew to just do just a bit of Touch up, anchor, bevel, cut. Just not to cut it through. Just to get a little crisper detail. Now all I got. Um, I'm going to leave this on here till I finish this sanding. Now I think it's appropriate to mention uh, on the sanding. I'm going to go up to uh, 600, uh, 600 grit eventually. But first I'm going to go up to 400. Then I'm going to wet this. And in a little while, we're going to dye some pieces. I'm going to show you how it works. But I'm going to uh, wet this uh, to raise the grain because the dye will raise the grain. So by raising the grain and then sanding it up to 600, I'm hoping it won't raise as much when I put some dye on it. So we're going to go ahead and sand that now. I'll part that off. And we'll see you over at the table when I start the uh, showing you how to do the dyeing process. I also want to mention an option. Uh, if we screwed this ball up, we can always part it off and drill it. Uh, you could even use contrasting wood and make that part of your design to drill a hole and turn this out of maybe ebony, uh, turn, turn the little ball out of your white wood for the, uh, your dark, dark pieces. Uh, and that, that design feature is, shows up real well in this picture of this Zagreb uh, design set I found on, on Amazon. Okay, we're going to talk about dyeing a little bit. First thing we're going to talk about, before we do anything else, we're going to put on gloves. Uh, nitrile gloves, probably be better. A pair of those. You know, when you first start out, you think rubber gloves are rubber gloves, but no. Nitrile gloves are impervious to, to far more chemicals than latex. Uh, some chemicals will eat through latex, so uh, once you get this stain on you, it doesn't go away. Now there's lots of different stains out there. I use Trans Tint and one of the things I like about the Trans Tint is it uh, comes in a variety of colors. You can get it at various wood turning vendors. You can mix it with water or alcohol. Up to now I've always used water because I was generally blending colors and I find that uh, I was, the, the individual showed me, taught me, uh, showed that blending with a, a kitchen towel was easier with water than it was with um, alcohol because it didn't dry as fast. Now the downside is you may have some uh, grain. This time I'm going to use uh, uh, denatured alcohol with the hopes that it'll dry faster and may not uh, uh, raise the grain as much. I'm going to mix it in this tiny little container. The ratio that they call for here is two ounces to, thir uh, to two quarts which is basically a ratio of one to thirty two so it doesn't take a lot. Uh, I got this great tip from Sam Angelo on using these little pipettes uh, he had in his, one of his videos on coloring. So I bought a pack of these off Amazon. I've got a lifetime supply now. They're only uh, about three dollars for a for hundred. So let's get started. I'm going to use a, take the denatured alcohol and I'm just going to get enough that I think will handle this project. Now, you, you may be able to see that it went is almost like a magic trick. It went from clear to black because I had a little bit of dry, uh, dyed in there to begin with. So next thing I'm going to do, put the top back on the denatured alcohol. And I couldn't tell you how much is in there, but I can tell from a little experience I've had with this dye, it just doesn't take but a few drops. One, two, three. I think three is going to be plenty. And I'm going to use a brush. Uh, I also use, I found uh, straws to be a very handy uh, stirring uh, rod. Whoa, I slopped it around, so I'm going to have to be careful. 
I also made this little stand with some uh, screws on it that are the same size screws that I used on my screw chuck, which will make it easy. You can see I've already splashed a little on there. Make it easy to, to uh, do that. I'm going to use a simple paintbrush. So let's get started with the King. I'll show you this in a later video making the King, but I made the top out of a, out of a separate piece of uh, wood. I can tell it's drying very fast, but it's not dark enough, so clearly I'm going to have to add a little more dye. What the heck? Put in three drops. This, with only a few drops on projects, it goes a long ways. You can see what a mess I'm making here. And if you get uh, dye on here, you can get it on other things, so do be careful with that. I'm going to go ahead and wipe a little off, off my gloves just so I don't smear it as much. And once you finish a project in one color, you pretty much have to get rid of your gloves or you'll transfer it and accidentally mix up the color. I'm going to stir this up a little bit, take a little bit of this off, and just going to rub it on here. Yeah, we're going to get down this groove, this little trench first. And this is going on so thin, I may have to come back and put another coat to get the penetration, to get the darkness that I would like. And I didn't seem to have that issue with the uh, pawns when I did them with a water base, so I'm not sure how I'm liking this, but it's probably drying fast and it, it will probably accomplish the task that I wanted to. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this on the ebony. Just see what it does. I don't know if you can dye ebony, it's so thick, but I want, to, want these two colors to look similar. And maybe that will help, help blend them. Look for your white spots, that's the main thing. If you leave something uncolored when you come back and put another coat, uh, you know, it's not going to be consistent. So there's, there's that one. I'm just going to put that on there and go to the next piece. We've got several to do. Okay, I think I've gotten all these now. So I'm going to let this go. I'm not going to even bother to wash this. I do have some more pieces to do later. I'm not going to be concerned about this. This can dry in place. Um, because I'll just put a little more alcohol in it. Uh, so that's the, that's the process. Okay, we're going to take our black pieces and we're going to chuck them back up on the screw chuck in order that we can uh, polish them. And we're going to polish them with an abrasive, this U-Bu Triple E compound from Australia, which is just a, a great product for small uh, buffing small items on the lathe. It's got a uh, Triple E abrasive and some type of soft compound. And I keep a rag in here with a little of this stuff on it, so I can just rub it, easily rub it, rub it on. Doesn't take a lot. Now to reach down here, I think you might have seen this uh, in an earlier video, but this is just a handy trick with a slot cut in it to cut off of uh, some paper towel off the roll. Uh, tape it with a bandsaw and then you cut it off to fit it. Uh, this is on there with a screw. Like I said, it just comes off. And it's got a magnet uh, on the side of my lathe to hold it and it just pulls off. It's just very, very handy. Alright, so I'm going to use this. Now we get the speed of this thing up a little bit. I didn't tighten it down. It's not running as true as I like, so let's... Tighten it back up a little bit. You do need to make sure it seats before you... Tighten it up. Okay. Easily fixed. Okay. That's running a little truer. 
and we're just going to polish it up. Keep it moving. The dye is not a, uh, a, a final coat, so you've got to put something on it. And I'm just going to use hard wax on it, just like I do the light pieces, after I've got this. It takes off just a little bit. Now I'm going to take that canuba wax and just put a light, light film on it while it's turning at a high speed. Take one of these I've used, turn it inside out. And just keep it rubbing, and that'll give us a really nice protective coat of this very hard wax, this carnauba. Very hard. And it comes with my, uh, came with my Beal buffing system, so I didn't have to go out and buy some. I already had plenty of it. Looks like I might have got on a little too much. Having a hard time getting it rubbed out here. And there we got it with a nice, nice shine. Alright, I did a sample and I did one with the triple E over top of the color and one without. And I didn't find a material difference to tell you the truth. And I think it's because my finishing on the wood was so good. I took that with that um, uh, raising the grain and, and, and sanding it up to 600. The finish was so good it wasn't improved materially by the triple E. So I'm just skipping that step. I did put, put I do still put the pieces back on the lathe to rub a coat of um, canuba wax on it and melt it on there. Uh, but I find that actually if I finish it on the Beal Buff, this three-in-one system, uh, it does a little bit better. It gets rid of any little streaks that I might, that I might have. And I keep it in the uh, screw chuck because it gives it something convenient to hold on to. And I just keep it moving. Keep it moving. Lightly on this detail. And now I've really got a nice, nice finish.